Hello friends. In our last video, we checked out the unveiling of Adobe Firefly. However, thanks to my good friend, the Billy FX, who hooked me up with an Adobe contact, I now have access to Firefly. So I'm going to give you a walkthrough and a tutorial of how it works. So let's get started with that. So if you were with me in my last video, you remember seeing Adobe Firefly side here, and this is their generative AI tool for images. And now I have access to the text to image here and the text effects. And we're actually going to check the text effects first, because that's their most unique feature and something that no other generative AI tool does well yet. Not Midjourney, not Stable Fusion, not Dolly. Adobe Firefly is actually the king when it comes to text. You can see some of the examples here where there's just letters, but you can actually generate for yourself. And that's where you have the little input text box down here at the bottom. So let's say we wanna write something. I'm gonna steal this from my friend Matt who also does videos on YouTube. He used the word uh, subscribe, dripping chocolate. And we're gonna press generate. And now we have here the word subscribe and dripping chocolate and it's generating here. Now it gets like a letter at a time and then it pops in. And I've noticed one thing, when it has the same letters, like the S's here, for example, it just clones them, which is kind of, well, I would like a new generation for each S, but uh, it is what it is. And you can actually adapt this. So first of all, you have the sample effects, a lot of samples that you can use, flowers, uh, wires, balloon, bread toast, etc. Then you have how much of the effect here that you will see. So if you have a tight fit, the chocolate here is going to stay closer to the letters and a loose fit is going to mean that the chocolate is going to go out a little bit which can give you a much more creative effect here you have actually drips of chocolate coming from around the letters and you also have various fonts let's take the popular one here which is a good condensed font you also have the option to just use various background colors so our Default here is on a transparent background. We can, for effect's sake, let's take this one, which is a good fit to brown chocolate. And if you're not happy with it, you have four to choose from here. It actually renders or generates each time you press these. So these are not pre-rendered. So you can either press one of these or just refresh and get a new one. Let's try a, a different one. Let's try water. I'm gonna type splashes of water here. I'm going to change to Alfarn font. Now, let's see what more we have. Yeah, let's go with the Alfarn. We're going to generate down here to get our new input here. And now we have our splashes of water. And I think this calls for a different background. Let's take the pale blue here. I think this looks pretty good. Now, you can type whatever. You don't have to type water and have it in water. You can say, like my family name here and it starts generating instantly so this is uh, the coolest feature in my opinion with adobe firefly for now now there are other features that are also very good but we'll get to those in a bit and i think another great feature with adobe firefly is the actual user interface and you're going to see that when we look at text to image generation in a bit but just the ease of use you don't have to know anything you don't have to install anything it's super easy to get around let's check some of the sample effects here i'm gonna take this jungle vine here we said the prompt is jungle vine and bird so you have lots of foliage coming in and birds and some kind of seeds and nuts here. I think this is very cool, to be honest. And if you feel that, oh, I don't want all these leaves coming around or you have text effect fit, you can change between tight, fit, medium and loose. So let's look at how the tight one here is. And as you can see, we now have nothing around the letter. So everything is contained inside the actual typeset. So I think that is very cool. I'm gonna try another one. Let's check this font, Vortis. I'm gonna say candy, various candy. And here's another great example. I'm gonna choose a pretty pastel. That's pretty nice. This pink's nice as well. I'm gonna go with this. And whenever you 
feel you're finished with it, you have options here. You can either submit to the gallery, you can copy it to your clipboard and use it to export to Photoshop or whatever. You can also download here. But if you are downloading, they're applying a watermark, as you can see down here in the corner. Adobe Firefly, it's a beta as of right now, so the image is not for commercial use. But this is a pretty big image. This is 4,000 by 1,000 pixels, roughly. So you can zoom in here, and here we are at 100%. And it's fairly detailed. I mean, if you go closer, you can see the stuff here is kind of mushed together. But for a beta, I think this is very good. And I mean, looking at this size, it looks sharp and crisp. Moving on to the text to image, which is what most of you are probably already familiar with from Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, and Dolly, and that is text generation, a text input prompt that will output an image. And here are some examples created by the community. As this has been trained on Adobe stock photos, you will have that sort of stock image feel sometimes but you can still get amazing photos out of it. So let's try and take a prompt here. I'm gonna put in a rather long prompt at first, something you could see in, in Mid Journey. We have a 3D fluffy alpaca, adorable, cute, big circular reflective eyes, long fuzzy fur, 3D render cinematic, smooth, intricate, detailed, cinematic, vibrant, tropical jungle in the background. That was a mouthful. Then you have some options here to the right. Just a quick input here that these images are great, to be honest. This is just a first render that I have not cherry picked. Now I did prepare the prompt, but I didn't prepare that. I can't, can't even choose a seed. So this is completely random. And you have here, first of all, you have an aspect ratio. So you can pick that fairly easy. If we change this to 16 by nine, we get a new generation. So you can't keep the same. If you have something you like in a square format, you can't have the same image. You need to generate a new one. And here, then you have your content type. And then I've noticed that picking photo art or graphic is actually the best option. If I choose none and try to describe what I want, art style, whatever, it doesn't become as good as if I press the art content type up here. You can still get good images, but it's much easier to do it with the presets up here. Then you have some preset styles that you can play with, and these two are actually fairly okay. If you press the little buttons here, all, you can see all the available styles. Now you can still input whatever you want down here as a style, but this is much easier. However, just a reminder that if you have too long prompts, then you can override the settings here. So what we have down here is a bit much, so it might not work with the styles here. Here we have an example where I've input puppy dog playing in grass, and I've applied some styles here. First of all, we have the content type photo, and then we have a color tone, pastel color, we have a lighting, which is dramatic lighting, and composition, close up. Now we can change this, let's say we change this into shot from below, and let's change the style into, let's try this synth wave, see what that gets us. So now most of the images are shot from below, and we have a synth wave kind of style. Now this wasn't great, so we're gonna remove the synth wave, I'm gonna remove the pastel colors here, I'm gonna change the color tone to vibrant colors. And we're gonna generate again. And now these are actually very good photos. Now looking at this, we have a very narrow depth of field. So we have got some great bokeh coming in here. I think the details on this dog are actually very good. And the grass looks great. So as far as photographs go, especially ones that are very similar to stock photos, you can create great stuff. And if you're new to generative AI, it's as simple as just telling the AI what you want in the input field down here. I'm gonna try something else. We're gonna have a flower in a colorful swirling space nebula. I'm gonna remove the styles here. We can actually press the clear style and we're gonna change this into art. And I want a 16 by nine and we're gonna let it generate for us. 
Now this is fairly cool and I like how the flower kind of merges into the swirling space nebula here. So I'm very happy with this result. And I like, you know, the spacey nebula images in general because they're so chaotic and you can get all these little happy accidents. However, if you change this into a photograph, you're getting a much more crisp result. While it still looks like an artistic painting because you can't really see this in real life, there's some extra crispness to the edges and everything. So I think this is one of the best of the bunch, but it's all very subjective, this. It also is fairly good in, with coherence in understanding what you want. So if we do something more complex, let's have an astronaut riding a motorcycle on a space rainbow. We're gonna generate that. We're gonna keep the photo style for now. So we have an astronaut on a motorcycle that didn't fail in any of the image. It's not really on a space rainbow. It, this one here could be riding on a space rainbow. The other two only have, has the space rainbow in the background, but it's still fairly good compared to what we asked it to do. Now the big difference is compared to Mid Journey V5, which can get images like this with a simple prompt. And this is basically just portrait of a woman in dramatic lighting, f1.4, 35 millimeter lens. And if we do the same thing here, we will get more stock image-like results. Can't load, one or more words violate the user guidelines. I think I remember from another video that it was lens. So we're gonna try again. And as you can see, while these are exactly what we asked for, it's portraits of women in sorta of dramatic lightings, but it's not at all similar to this kind of output. Now this is something else when it comes to the artistic vibe of it. That that's not to be said that this can't be used. These actually look great. And it looks like real people. The eyes are great, which, which is one of the harder things for the AI to reproduce when, together with hands. And that's something we can look at at this time. Holding up her hand, I'm gonna add to this. And in, I'd say in three of our images, we have something that is fairly good. Here's a hand with five fingers. Here's a hand with five fingers. The nails are kind of weird and there's some artifacts there and this one's kind of broken. But honestly, with without cherry picking anything, it isn't bad. It's close to what you can get in mid-journey now. Something I noticed with this image is how crisp and clear the skin is. I mean, obviously she's wearing makeup here, but you can, you can actually see that. It's not that AI generated lines everywhere. Ac actually looks like skin and a photograph of person. So while this was supposed to be an image to look at the hands, we looked at the skin here instead. That's okay. Here we have generated an image which, where the prompt is cyberpunk man, video game art, sci-fi city in background, cinematic neon lights. And I've chosen to put in art and concept art. So these are more illustrations or drawings. I think that's fairly cool. Let's try and remove the concept art. Let's see, we, can we find a style, maybe 3D art? Let's try hyper-realistic and um, let's generate that. I just love how intuitive this user interface is. I mean, it's, it's very simple. You don't have a lot to choose from. So you don't have the control that you have in Stable Diffusion, but for a lot of people, this is all you need. And Mid Journey, while it is great, even for beginners, it's still a threshold to get over installing Discord and everything. So I think this is a great entryway into generative AI. So let's have a quick look at what the other people have created. So here's an example of a beautiful flowers and a blob object frozen in a block of ice isolated on a warm gray background. And I think if you're just learning, starting out, look at the images available and check the prompts that they have used. That's basically how every one of us learned in the beginning of Stable Diffusion and Dolly. We had libraries of prompts where we borrowed 
from each other and adapted and, and played with it. I think this is a very cool image, except for the moon or the sun here. Here's a pineapple that's made of rainbow cake inside. I noticed, however, that these four images are not the same as this one. This was actually better. This was kind of cute. I like this. So I hope you've learned something today and I hope you enjoyed our little time together. Just remember that uh, this is still a beta, so you can sign up for access and they are rolling out access to a lot of people now, I've been told by Adobe, but uh, it might take a while since a lot of people have requested access. If you want to talk more about this, let me know your comments in the comments. I'm also available on Discord if you want to chat. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. As always, have a good one. See ya.